Welcome to Sales Secrets from the Top 1%, where the world's best sales experts share their secrets to sales success. My name is Brandon Bornanson, a serial salesperson and entrepreneur, and I'm sitting down with the world's best sales experts to share their top secrets to sales success. Welcome to this episode of Sales Secrets from the Top 1%, where the world's best sales experts share their secrets to sales success. And I'm thrilled to have joined with me the copier warrior, Dale Dupree, who is slaying wasteful spending and conquering poor copier service nationwide. Dale is also the co-host of LinkedIn Local Orlando. He's the founder of Sales Rebellion. Dude. Dale, I am thrilled to have you. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you, bro. Share some knowledge with you. Yeah, I've been seeing all your stuff all over LinkedIn. I know a lot of my friends that are sales authors, leaders that were like, hey, if you got to talk to Dale. He'd be straight fire on the show and for the book. So I was like, done, no brainer and reached out that same day. So for those that don't know you, and I don't even know you that well, tell me about who you are, where you came from how you got into sales and how you were quote unquote, the became the copier warrior slaying wasteful spending. Uh, yeah, man, would, definitely. would love to just hear from the beginning on up to, to where we're at today. Yeah, for sure. So it's important. Uh, if you don't know my story that you understand that back in 1984, my, my father started his own copier sales firm. He had left the big box store, became completely discontent with the way that they were running their business. Uh, you know, just based on, uh, how they were conducting business, I should say, more than anything. Customer service, you know, all the money that they were making and not doing any good with it. My dad was a very moral man, and so he said, well, screw it. I'm just going to take a huge risk here and uh, take my family on a wild ride. And so I was born a year later, and so my entire life, I lived and breathed inside of the copier world and small business. Um, I've seen every single up and down you can possibly imagine. Um, and I mean every single up and down. Like, I, I could literally write an encyclopedia <laughs> about the things that I've experienced. So for me, though, sales was something that was just always natural. It was something that I came back to also um, I, because I played music uh, when I was 17. I got signed to a, a major record label wow. on the road. I had a lot of fun. Um, but at the same time, in the process of doing that as well, too, I learned that everything that you do in life typically lines back up to sales because I was going around selling my music everywhere that I went and selling kids that had no idea who we were on us and, and the performance that we were going to put on that night, the fun that we were going to have, who we were as individuals. You know, sometimes it was bigger than just the notes coming out of, of the speakers. It was, it was a, an emotional connection that you could get with these kids every night. And so when I came home uh, around that time, I was 21, 22 and decided to stop playing music uh, full time. I started selling copiers with my dad. And, and I've literally been in the copier industry ever since. <laughs> so um, you, you could say too Wasn't that I'm that a wild ride with, going dude, from, so, from uh, music, like, Hey, that's crazy that you were in music and then going from music to, to selling copiers with your dad. Like, was it hard to transition? It's funny because it, it, I didn't really transition. I, my dad would tell you, if, you know, and he passed away from cancer a couple of years ago, but if he was here, I'm so he'd sorry say, to hear that, man. Oh, I appreciate that, man. He, he would say that my son kept his rock star mentality into his first couple of years of, of being in sales. I had the long hair. I had big old plugs in my ears. I showed my tattoos every day when I went to work kind of thing. Um, and I wasn't afraid of that. So I told that story constantly. People would say, how'd you get into copy yourself? And I'd tell them, but then I would, I would tell them my passion, you know, and my, my dream that I was living at the time, because I still actually played music, um, in the transition. So I, I would have shows on the weekends or I would have, you know, 30 days on the road once, you know, a year, kind of like during the summer when, when there was downtime. So, so I, I, did, I didn't really like drop it cold Turkey and go directly into sales. I kind of did both of them and then eventually just, just excelled in the sales world and decided I wanted to give it a hundred percent of my attention. Wow. So, and you and I have an interesting background because my father spent 33 years in software sales and wow. then I went into sales and it sounds like your father, so he launched his own copier, he, that was his own business? Correct. Yes. So you just went right into the family business then? I did. That's amazing, dude. Walk me through kind of how that went, how long you were doing that for. Yeah, so 2008 technically was was when I was 
really hitting my stride there. But around 2007 was, was when I started dabbling in it. But 2008 till 2012, I, I built the business back up throughout the, the, the mini recession that we went through. We, we, I remember we picked up, I think, about 400 plus copy machines over the course of wow. six months from people that just had gone out of business. Right. And how much so, do copier machines, like, I don't know how much that costs. Like, yeah. How yeah. Much so do these the, things the, uh, the average transaction we, we like to say is $8,500. Um, but, but you could sell a, a machine for upwards of a million dollars, depending on, on the specifics of where it's going, like a repo room or a production print shop or a big, university that's running curriculum internally so people spend a lot of money on these things at the end of the day but the average sale is around eight to ten thousand dollars so and then who was your icp that you were selling this to like your ideal customer we the ideal customer for us which was it was real interesting because a lot of times and, and of course we've all learned this if we've been in sales that you're you're focused on a target right you you got to be you got to be a little bit granular about it too if you instead of that broad stroke of saying i will i'll take anybody that will buy a copy machine from me but really what happened and what i learned to be super successful for myself was that my dad had existing customers and so i looked at their verticals and he had cpas he had attorneys he had medical firms he had mortgage guys right he had he had the spectrum so what i said was well, why would I go out and, and target all new business when I can just go and ask these people, like, how are we doing? And will you refer me to one of your friends that owns a business as well, too? And so I just started looking at it from this relationship standpoint. How can I go make friends in the right places and then have them just weave me in and out of the businesses that need my services so that I don't have to go and target just manufacturing? So in, in doing that, I mean, I ended up, sir, I, I've served every vertical you can possibly imagine. I mean, from um, people that make pet food, <laughs> wow. the guys that the guys that run eBay stores in their house, right? So I mean, the, the craziest stuff. And uh, okay, so so you're selling these eight to ten thousand dollar machines, uh, business to business. Was this like knocking on door to door, or like how would you sell it? One hundred percent door to door business. I I love I dude I love door to door badass salespeople. Because I think that's like, you got to be like the strongest, the hardest, the best, like to go door to door and get, you know, shut down face to face. Uh, I don't know. It's like, dude, you just got to have a lot of courage, a lot of confidence. And people don't have to do that anymore by just shooting an email or making a cold call or dropping a right. LinkedIn message. Like that shit's so easy. Like, dude, go outside in the winter, put on a coat and your ear muffins and go knock door to door hundred. How many doors would you knock a day? I did. I mean, in, in my prime, um, I would push the limits pretty hard. So you, you could find me in a day. I could, I could do about 40 to 50 in-person cold calls that were, that had substance behind them. Um, wow. So I, I could I could walk out of that day and say that I found ten prospective clients that were going to buy within this time frame, and then I could say that all fifty were somebody that I was going to go after at some point in time, right? So so I, I was always I, I cold called with massive amounts of intentionality, always. I never did anything just to do it. I always had a reason behind why I was in the field. I had a reason behind why it's Friday and why I'm I'm door knocking or why it's Thursday and why I'm calling on the phone. So I I was very 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 laser focused. Wow. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Um, gosh, I know we don't have a lot of time. I've got like 17 things that I want to go into. Like I want to hear the craziest stories. I want to like after today, once we get your sales secret, we're going to have to do another one of these. Um, so singer turns copier warrior, um, you know, talk to me about how much you earn and how much you made and like the, the type of like success that you had doing this. And then that will lead into, uh, I want you to, you know, let's talk about your top sales secret for the audience. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, realistically for me, the way that, that, that I molded my career again, you know, just to kind of go back to the basics of what sales is, is that I looked and I said, what is it that's important that I, that I'm doing on a daily basis? And, and I slowly realized that, that the most important thing that, that, that was, was prospecting. So always be prospecting. So those are my ABCs of sales from the very beginning, but Instead of prospecting to find customers, I was focused on prospecting to build my community. I wanted to become a legend, essentially locally. That was my con that was my goal. That was my mindset. A my legend. Team. I love how you say <laughs> a legend, dude. Like not just like I want people to know me. You're like, dude, I want to be the number one legend. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And if, and the reason that I, that, that word rings so true to, to me specifically is because my father was a, an absolute legend. Um, and, and not to, to deviate from the subject here, but at his funeral, there was well over a thousand people and people, and I'm not talking about just friends and family. I'm talking about guys and girls came up to me and, and my, and my mom and my siblings and my wife and said, you know, you've never met me, uh, because your dad and I just knew each other through business. Like he just sold me a copy machine, but, but he meant so much more to me than that. And so I came to pay my respects to him. Right. I mean, that, that's incredible that to me. Uh, yeah. And it was a, an awakening. Um, that day was an awakening for me thousand bigger than I ever thought dude. it would be. There was, it's wild, a- dude. There was, it was like a, a line out the door kind of thing of people trying to get in just to make sure that they got to say their goodbyes. And that, dude. that, that hit, hit yeah. home real hard for me. Right. And so I, so I look back at all the things that he had taught me and all the things that he always preached on a daily basis and watched them come to fruition in his exit from this earth. And, and that to me was, was a man of integrity in real life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like not somebody that went around and, and, you know, bullshitted half the time or, or, you know, fabricated the truth or had a hard time with being focused on what it is that their end goal needed to be. I mean, my dad was like the perfect salesman through and through. And I I'll always strive to be that. That's why I use that word legendary. Um, but, but again, you know, locally, I, that's how I focused. And, and slowly I became just that where, where even now in my content days of, of LinkedIn, and I've only been posting daily on LinkedIn for about a year and three months now, but I've got over 17 million views of my content in that time frame. And here locally, it's done things for me that I can't even describe to you across the United States and the world. It's done some great stuff too, but locally, I mean, I can walk into a place and, and if I'm wearing my copier warrior hat or, or I'm just looking familiar at all, the front desk people will know who I am in most cases, or the decision maker will say, yeah, yeah I, I love your, your content on, on LinkedIn. But, but for the most part, again, remember that, like I said, I don't do anything without having intentions behind it. And so I know those people know who I am through social because I target them. I, I try, I add them on LinkedIn. And then I, instead of spamming them with messages, I just make sure they see my content and see that I'm, I'm a real human that wants to interact with them. Yeah, that that's amazing. So, you know, doing all of these different things, um, I, you know, tell me about the success quickly that you've had, cause we've only got five minutes left. And then well, I want to like, for a minute, talk about the success you had, like with your, your always be prospecting with some of these things. And then let's talk about what is your top sales secret? What is sure. your number one sales secret that you would tell yourself if you were 18 going back in to copy your sales for the first time, you know, what would that be? So, um, yep. actually, you know what, let's go over your sales secret. Let's talk about your sales secret just in case we run out of time. And then we'll talk about the success that you had applying it. Sure. Um, so I'm one of the things that, that I buck big time is, uh, I, I constantly buck the experts that pretend as if somehow what they've done or, or how they've accomplished something is a secret in the first place. Most of it, when it comes to sales success is, truly you as a unique individual going out and tapping into your ability to be better than everybody else. It's kind of the idea behind it. And, and that, that, that takes a, a, co- a complete mindset shift and change because you've got to focus on serving your community more than you've got to focus on serving yourself and making money. Right. But I'll say this, that for me, what really drove my success was a formula that I created about cold calling. And I call it reason, which stands for radically educate and share one's narrative. And, and that's, that's like my cheat code for it, right? That, 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 that version of it, but, but really inside of reason, what it stands for is R E is to radically educate A is for attention S is for story O is for outline. And then N is nuanced. And the, and what I, what I created in this, this little piece is that it, where, where you sit down and make 30 cold calls because your boss told you that if you didn't, he was going to fire your ass at the end of the month, right? where I sit down and I find 30 people and say, I'm going to radically educate each one of these. I'm going to share my story. I'm going to, I'm going to profess the outline that, that I want to accomplish with them. I'm going to nuance everything so that they feel pieces of me throughout it. And it created a lot of success for me. But, but really where, where the, the secret came in is that you talked about how you love dudes that, that knock on doors and, and persevere through the grind. Well, I, I figured out early and when it's why I created my reason theory in the first place, which was that I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want to have to deal with these negative interactions. I want people to just be so overwhelmed with my presence 
that they don't know what to do other than to introduce me to the decision maker because they'll think if they don't, they'll have FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Or they'll think that this is an opportunity that might not happen again and, and it could help me as, a, as, as the front desk person to do right. this introduction, right? That was the, the concept when creating this. So, so I developed things like, and if you watch my content, anybody listening that does, the crumpled letter. It's one of my most famous outreach pieces, which I really truly haven't told anybody what it is yet, but some people know it out there in the industry because it's an old real estate trick. I just made it my own and, and went out and, and refabricated it to where it works for copiers and it, and it interrupts the pattern of the buyer's daily cycle. And to me, that's the, the, the biggest secret that I've put together for myself that's enabled me and helped me to be better at sales. And what was that, the, the real estate trick? So it's called the crumpled letter, right? And, and I'm talking like 2004 is when this, this thing was, was, was first done. And I'll tell you the original reason for, or the purpose for the marketing piece is that there was a realtor that would send out mass uh, mail marketing every 90 days that a, that a listing was still in place, okay? And he would send you out this piece that basically said, hey, come and, and join my team and we won't let you go 90 days. But he would get 1% return from that piece, right? And so he said, well, what, how do I catch people's attention? And so what he would do is he would send that first piece, but then he would send a second one and he would crumble up the letter and, and send it to him and say, hey, you threw me away last time into the trash, but I found my way back into the mail to get to you. And I'm hoping that you'll take a second to read me this time. And on that one, he got a response rate of like 30%, right? So I read that and thought, that's genius, the idea behind it, right? So so we do it a little bit differently than, than the way that that individual did. But but again, you know, it's, it's ideas about how you go and you, you interrupt the pattern of someone's daily activity. When you see that, you're like, well, shit, I'm going to read this thing, right? That's the idea. So how do you do it? <laughs> So my book comes out. It's gonna. It's probably gonna be in the in the month of February. You're the first person I've told that to, actually. So ah, congrats, you might have man. To, you might have to bleep this part out, but um, is, it, is it this be, in the this is in the book? It's in the book. I give the content away. I give the concept away. Everything, oh, and it's shit. it's not anything you think in your head right now. Like I've had people okay. go, "Is this how you do it?" And I just laugh every time and say, "No, <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> not quite." <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm like gonna be thinking about this crip, crimpled letter. <laughs> I'm going to be like at, I'm going to be at my birthday dinner tonight. Like with my fiance, she's going to be like, what are you thinking about? And I'm like, dude, I got to figure out how Dale, what is he, what is he doing? Here's a, here's, a, here's a hint. Here's a hint. I, one of the things I'm famous for here locally is I printed out tw uh, 12 cardboard replicas of myself. Okay. Six foot replicas. And what That's I did awesome. is I took an image of me stabbing a copy machine with a sword and the copier was golden. And I was actually pulling the sword out of it, like sword in the stone kind of deal in the middle of the woods. And there were big texts at the top that said, every day he wakes up believing this is his job. And I took that to 12 of the, the most profitable businesses to guys that were worth hundreds of millions of dollars to earn their business, right? So that's how, that's my hint for you that I go all in on this stuff. It's not simple ever. It's always elaborate and off the wall. That's amazing. And then the, the sales secret. So you said reason, right? Yep. Resonate? Radically educate. Radically educate. narrative. Okay. Radically educate and share one's narrative. That's the only bad part about uh, when you're doing these these videos. I'm so used to taking notes like 24-7 right. in Salesforce, like every interview I do. And now it's like I can't take notes and I hate that because every time I note, it goes right in the brain. Okay. <laughs> Reason. Say it one more time for the audience. Reason is to radically educate and share one's narrative. That's a short form for it. That, it what, what you want to think when you, when you say that out loud is that you want to think story. <laughs> that's really, that's the idea and the concept. Like what's the stop, story? Stop, right, stop walking in and introducing people uh, to you and your culture by saying, hi, I'm with XYZ Company and I sell this product and I want to talk to the decision maker for it. Nobody cares at all who you are or what you do when you introduce yourself that way. But if you can resonate with the person across the counter from you and, and draw them out a little bit by getting their brain activity working to the fullest extent instead of them blocking and just saying sales guy <laughs> that's the idea behind that's it, awesome right? man well i love it dale and then just so the audience knows applying this sales secret what what type of success have you had with it yeah i mean dude my success has been for me it's it's the massive amount of friendships and and the big community that i've cultivated here in central florida for myself from the Barb county out to Lake County, I mean, all, all the way through Orange County. And anybody that lives in the area knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's a big space. Um, and, and the idea for me is, is that 
I can go to any of those places any time of the day and I can, I can meet people that I know or that I've at least bumped into or have a, a good relationship with. But on top of it, um, you know, what I'm, what I'm locally, what I'm famous for is uh, being the top ref in the copier world, quite frankly. And any of them that are watching that want to prove that wrong in the area, feel free. I mean, come on. I've been waiting for the last 12 years for one of y'all to show up. But the, the concept for me was that I wanted to go and, and secure net new business. In the copier industry, it was all about defending the port. There was a bunch of guys that had a bunch of legacy accounts that had been sitting on it forever. And I went and disrupted that. I went and and found those decision makers and pulled the business away from 20 year relationships because I exposed the true nature of sales and what it is that I could do to differentiate their workflows internally, but also the relationship that they could have with their salesperson, someone who actually gave a flying shit about anything that they had going on outside of business as well, too. So, so for me, um, that's my, my success. I look at it a little bit differently than most and that, you know, monetarily I've, I've made a ton of money. Okay. <laughs> a ton of my copiers are very lucrative. Anybody that's ever sold a copier knows you can make a lot of money in this industry. But for me, the focus became more about my community, more about the people on the other end that were actually signing and, and that they were humans too. And that I needed to be more intentional with them and build relationships with them. And that's really where the fruit of my labors have come from. Yeah. And, um, uh, I may have good news that my next 30 minute interview may have gotten moved out. So, um, if that's the case, I just want to, let's just keep rolling. So with the, so the, the, these 20 year relationships, like you would just go after them and like prospect them and then like do things different. Like how did you win these accounts from the John who had the relationship with the big B2B enterprise fortune 500 company and all their copiers? Like, Walk me through exactly step by step how, how yeah. you did that. Yeah, so so one of my first marketing pieces uh, inside of my reason theory, I I always hit you with a marketing piece first and foremost. I come to meet you and hand it to you in person in most cases, but if you're not in, I leave it, and and I leave it because I know it's so powerful that it's going to catch your eye and you're going to call me. But that's the idea behind it. So so one of my first marketing pieces was I called it the all in one copier, <laughs> and and it basically it had pancakes coming off the finisher on the, on the right side of it. it. It did your laundry for you. It had an espresso machine built in a Turkey in the oven on the bottom, right? And it was an image. And, and at the bottom of it, it just said, I could change your life with the right solution. And, and people wow. that resonated, it was a bigger message. You know, everybody else is just going around saying, can I sell you a copier? And then there's this weirdo that's walking around with this crazy marketing. But I'll tell you right now that if I passed a hundred of those flyers out, I would have 90 conversations. The 10 conversations that I didn't have in that sequence, I would make up for it later and I'd go back and hit them again and again and again until I finally had them um, secured and had, a real, and had a conversation with them too. And so in the process of doing that, people would say to me, we called you because you're insane and we, we love what we saw. And it even says that you'll pick up your cell phone anytime. And so we were just testing to see if you would, right? Because it's six o'clock. And, and so there was a lot of little things inside of that marketing that that I put my money where my mouth is and I proved it, I included my own personal website, copierwarrior.com. And I, I had recorded commercials. I love like, the hat, dude. I love <laughs> that. Nice. I love that hat, man. Nice. I've got yeah, an so. LF, I've got our own hats too, LFG. I don't know if you saw them. Uh, no, I haven't, but that's good marketing, dude. It's because you can, with these, you can always be branding. You can always be making people aware of you and what it is you do. I mean, I'll go out and do some volunteer work and wear it. And some guy that's there as well will come up and be like, copier warrior, huh? What's that? And I'll have a conversation with him. And then all of a sudden he's handing me his cell phone number and saying, call me on Monday because I own this big old firm. You know, we got four okay. machines and I need you to come in and talk See, to me. It's a little so, bit harder for me when people ask, what is LFG? Mean? <laughs> and I got to be like, let's effing go, dude. Let's <laughs> go. Like I, I get asked all the time. They're like, what does that mean? And it's like a grandma with her kid. And I'm like, it means love family God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, That's a which good is, fallback. Which is what I had to tell Under Armour. Under Armour wouldn't print the damn hats for me. Oh, that's too um, funny. So now my secret's out. Under Armour, come on. It's already done. It's already on the wild. Uh, dude, so so you do all this market. Like what I love about you, because you came from the, the singer, the band, and you had to do all this wild, uh, they call it grassroots marketing, right? So like you had to do all this grassroots marketing to get your uh, CDs and records sold. So you applied it to B2B sales. And like, 
it sounds like marketing and the branding have been a big success driver for you. It has been. I, a lot of people, they, they constantly try to debate with me on uh, whether or not marketing and sales is, are the same thing. For me, I've lived that life. Like it's a, I've always, marketing has been part of my existence yeah. throughout. Right? Same and here. It's been what's created same so thing. much success for me. So to me, the marketing side it has to be 100% aligned with the sales side. And they both have to have the idea of this long-term sales cycle. Okay, you can't just be looking for instant gratification. Salespeople do that way too much. And, and so they're not aligned with marketing because marketing, the purpose of marketing is to do the opposite. <laughs> it is to make people aware and then over time tr trickle them all into the funnel, right? So because we're not aligned on those two things, that's why salespeople fail constantly when it comes to you know allowing marketing to help them. It doesn't because they're not aligned with it whatsoever from the mentality state to even the process itself. So, yeah, that makes total sense, man. That that's amazing. And the branding and the marketing. So you, you crush it with that. How, how do sales reps that are working for like a big corporate company, because you and I are unique, right? Like I've got hats printed with LFG on them and I crush quota t-shirts that I wear every day. Like what if you work for Marketo and it's a B2B <laughs> marketing automation software that's publicly traded, that's got a lot of green tape on corporate governance. Like, wh how would one go about doing something like that? Yeah, it, what's crazy is I'm, I'm actually, it's funny you ask that because I'm, I'm helping a couple people in the corporate culture to define themselves a little bit better right now uh, because I do sales coaching on the side. And, and one of the things that, I'm developing and actually right now it's for SDRs. SDRs are so confined. It's like they're in this tiny little box. Like they can't get out of it either, dude. Um, yeah. Because the corporate culture said so, right? But I, I'm developing uh, with a couple SDRs and actually one one that just recently hit me up that he is this this gentleman. I mean, this guy is he's got the mindset he wants change, and, and that's all that you really truly need. You need this attitude to be able to say, I'm going to inflict change no matter what. Okay. And if, if the company doesn't align with it, sure. I'm not advocating that, that you go out and, and do what the company says not to do. But what I'm saying is, is that if you have a rational conversation with your corporate culture, uh, you know, so your CEO, your, your vice president of sales and, and say, Hey, I, I'd like to compliment it. I'd like to compliment the corporate culture by doing these three things. I I'm telling you right now that they'll listen. I mean, my company listens. I work for a corporation right now. But at the same time, too, it's why I started the sales rebellion in the first place and started getting people thinking that way, because we have to do things differently now. We have to lead the charge for change. We have to be rebellious as salespeople. That's how salespeople are successful. They, they run the exact opposite way of everybody else. So you're, in a, you're in a deal. There's five people competing against you. They're all showing a copier. It's all the same speed. It's just a different manufacturer. And everybody is trying to convince this person why they're the best. While everybody else is focused on the products and services, you just slowly nuance yourself throughout the process and make this person feel so entwined with you. I mean, essentially, you're trapping them, <laughs> right? Like in a good way, uh, yeah. because you yeah. you're in, because you're positively indoctrinating them toward your culture and what it is that you want to provide to them bigger than just the copy machine. Like, look, Mr. Customer, they're all made in Japan. They're all 50 pages per minute and they all jam every once in a while. Who's going to be the guy you call to fix that problem? Who's going to be the guy that's actually going to care and not say, oh, let me tell my service department and I'll have them out for you. I mean, who's the guy that's going to go the extra mile? It's me. But if you don't trust me, that's fine. You can go with somebody else. I mean, having that attitude and having that mindset and, and slowly indoctrinating people in a positive way to understand that you are the rebellious salesperson that's looking to make a difference for the buyer, not for yourself. Yeah, that, that makes a, a great sense selling like a commoditized product. How do you, how do you stand out? And did you have to do a lot with like customer success and customer service? I know one of the things that I had to do when I was selling for Google you know, and, and we were selling search marketing. I was working for a Google search agency. There were a thousand Google search agencies. So I right. just over-serviced. I was like, I'm available 18 hours a day, seven days a week. I hated saying 24 because I felt that that was lying because everyone's, <laughs> everyone sleeps. So like bullshit, you're not, like, you're not available <laughs> if you're sleeping. So I say 18, seven, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. I'm available all the time. Like, so I just use service and then I use like being aggressive and being out there and being obsessed with their success and ROI driven to win. Like, it sounds like you're doing it with marketing, with branding. Are you, 
What have you done on the service side to be different to win those deals? So on the service side, there's there's a ton of strategies, and and I don't want to give any of the the secrets away of the companies, or else you're I like I, well. I already gave away one secret. Yeah. Man. Well, and this is if, it, if they were mine, if these were my uh, policies and procedures, would be different. But they're the companies I work for, right? You know, and I've only worked for two: my dad's company, and I'm I'm with Zeno Office Solutions now. So, um, and I've been with them for the last year. So I was with my dad's company for quite some time, even through an acquisition, as a matter of fact, and became the vice president of sales um, after the acquisition with the new ownership. So, and uh, Zeno is a, a Xerox company, just for people correct. that aren't yeah. aware. They are so so it's essentially. Um, on the service side, what the companies do, everybody's got their differences. There, there have been some though that I've seen that are just, they're mind blowing. It's like, why aren't other people doing this? Is the idea. But for me individually, it's the concept of putting your money where your mouth is. We can't really truly get to show somebody the proof until we have an issue. So leading up to it, what we do is we, and inside of the way that we're nuancing ourselves in the salute and in, in the presentation of the solution, we show them when you have these issues, these are the things that are going to happen on the back end. These are, this is how I'm going to take care of you. And so we try to make them essentially play through those processes because most people go in and they, they present the solution as, you know, the Holy grail and that it's going to fix all these problems, but we tackle the problems too. We say, you're having these issues now, we're going to resolve them, but there's always going to be problems. And so let's talk about the top three that happen in the copier industry with your equipment and how we're going to handle it. So, so from the perspective of how I present from a service standpoint, I do it differently than everybody else. That's amazing, man. Thank you so much. And when it comes to, you know, the first 90 days, and I know we're going over, so I feel, I apologize, but what would, no, what would your fine. recommendation be? So, so you said, always be prospecting. And then you've got the sales secret, the acronym. Go ahead, drop it real quick. R E A S O N, radically educate and share one's narrative. Radically educate and share one's narrative reason, which is the top sales secret from Dale Dupree, the copier warrior. Uh, show off the hat for the audience real quick. I love that hat. <laughs> when it comes to the first 90 days, this guy just joined on your team, brand new guy in sales. Or he's average Joe. You knew he was average, but he had more in him from another copier company or whatever, tech, sales, whatever, it doesn't matter, manufacturer. The first 90 days, like, what would you recommend these guys? Like, I love that you dropped the always be prospecting. I love the the reason. I Like, what would you tell this guy or gal first 90 days? This is what you need to do to be successful. Yeah, so we, it's, it's a great question because the book that I got coming out around February of next year, it's the it's the first 30. Okay. It's the sales rebellion. It's the copier warrior's guide to the sales rebellion. Right. So, so it's the first 30 and then we're going to come out with the next 60 and a final 90. And so I've already, I've already started writing out exactly what your question is for people to go and buy and have on their shelf forever. And this is for, this is for sales people that have just started, like you said, but also for people that have been going through the motions for so many years. And they're like, I wonder if there's a better way to do this than the way that I've been taught at this point, you know, cause I feel in my heart that there's something bigger than just the transaction. Right. But I'll tell you what we focus on in the book in the first five days is the foundation, as we say. And so in the first five days, we, we basically give you an overview. And the, the number one most important thing that every sales individual has to do day one is to create their roots. You need to know exactly why it is that you're in this business, who you are as an individual and how you can share your reason theory with people in the first place. So until you know your story for yourself and why it is that you're doing what you're doing. So essentially Simon Sinek, you know, he's got that start with why concept. We, we have a little bit of a deviation from it for salespeople called your roots. And, and the idea is to take the four things that are the most important inside of the sales cycle and then mix them up with the things no, how you feel about them, I should say. Right. So making it extra personal for the, the people that are viewing your culture and, and, and wanting to do business with you. So people that go on my LinkedIn and read my bio, they don't really hear a whole lot about my copier experience in sales. They hear what drives me. They hear what motivates me. They hear who I am as an individual and how I want to help yeah. them from a community standpoint, from a bigger perspective. And so salespeople have to start there because it's not just about, oh, I sell this cool widget anymore. It isn't at all because you can buy that cool widget on Amazon or Google or, you know, you, you can find it anywhere, guys. Get it anywhere, idea. yeah. Anywhere, guys. So so you've got to you've got to be that differentiator. But 
We also have a fun thing called the Living Pipeline that goes very well with Reason. And, and it goes well with all these concepts. And the Living Pipeline is essentially the concept with that is that you, you, you take your old rusted funnel that you've got now. It, it's leaking. It, it's, it's dumb. In most cases, the way that people work a funnel, it's not the right way to do sales. Just throw that thing away. You know, and think of your pipeline as a living, breathing thing, kind of like a tree, for example, right? You got different branches on the tree. Every branch has its own set of fruit. It's, it's one branch is dying over here. Does that lose you? Up oh, your back. You were just saying cool, uh, cool. one branch, keep going. Right. So, so the branches are important, right? And the, and the concept of the branches for you as a sales individual listening to this now is that you have to understand that everything is alive inside of your pipeline. Your buyer might tell you that in four years, they're going to buy something. And in two years, they do it. But you put them down to go and follow up in four years because you were so focused on the sale itself and not cultivating a relationship with the buyer. And so you screwed up and somebody else slid in and did exact opposite of what you were doing and won the deal before you could even get back to that four year mark. Right. That's kind of the idea behind a living pipeline, but that's important as a foundation for salespeople. Salespeople, this is the, the worst thing that salespeople do is in the first 90 days, they go find all these prospects. They lose a ton of deals because they have to, because you have to fail, you have to learn, okay? That's just part of the process. But then you, you've got these 50 people that have told you that, that you had a good conversation with. They told you they're going to buy at some point, but because you're so wrapped up in prospecting and the process and the deals you did lose, and am I doing the right thing? Am I with the right guy? You're asking yourself all these questions that are convoluting the, the end result and the end goal, which is that you've got plenty of people inside of those sales calls that will talk to you. You just haven't cultured that relationship with them yet. You've just made a cold call. So being consistent, writing handwritten notes to thank them for their time, sending them little miniature newsletters like I do to get them acclimated to you and tell That's you so a little awesome. bit more about. I love that you do newsletters for the company. A lot, and a lot of it is a lot of it is um, isn't email either. It's it is I, it's printed because people won't read their email. It's what? <laughs> it's printed. A lot of the stuff I oh, do. Oh, you is print. Printed. Okay, so you print your newsletter and shoot it to them. I do, and sometimes it'll show up if if I know that you're not reading it or or you're not looking at any of my marketing, I'll put it in a box the size of your living room and send it to you. And and now, and now you're definitely going to open that box, right? And you're definitely going to find Smart. my marketing piece in there, right? So that the idea is, is that I'm always just going a little bit above and beyond what everybody's expectations are, because you need your buyer to understand that you will go all in for them. And if you don't have that attitude, just get out of sales right now and go do something else. Dude, that's amazing. I love it, man. I love it. So, uh, Dale, I, I know myself and, and probably the thousands or tens of thousands that are tuning in learned a lot from this episode. Where can people find you, connect with you, learn, learn more from you? Uh, please drop like, you know, all your, all your details cool. on where people can connect here. Yeah. The, the best place to go is copywarrior.com. Um, sales rebellion isn't watched quite yet, but you can go see the coming soon sign if you want. But if you had to come and you just screen keeps going black, but if you just scroll down, if you scroll down one, uh, little inch, right, you'll see YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Nice. There. So I would encourage people to check out my YouTube. It's just copier warrior. Check out my Twitter at copier warrior. Everything is copier warrior. But if you, if you enjoy content and you like to eat up ideas, I, my LinkedIn is the place to be because not just my content, but the comments that ensue are from professionals that know what they're talking about. They're people that add substance and value to the conversation. So join us, have fun with us. Dude, that's amazing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to get you out there. And then um, where can people be on the lookout for your book? What, what is the book and where can they pick it up at? Yeah, so the book, we're right in the final uh, stages right now. We're having a, a few people are reading it right now. Shout out to Larry Levine if you've watched it. How long this. did it take um, you to write the book? Because I'm obviously writing this book and I've got a second book yeah. on sales objections that I'm writing. And it's a pain in the ass, um, in my <laughs> opinion. Uh, you know, like how's the experience right. been for you? So I, I, I think I'm a writer at heart, you know, deep down inside. And it's kind of like we talked about in the beginning that I started in the music industry with all this creativity behind me. And I went into sales. So I've been looking for an outlet. Writing is my out, outlet more than anything. It's why I post so much content. Yeah. Why I shoot so much video Me on too. YouTube. Me too. So I love, I love to do this kind of stuff. So I took a year and I have a co-author, Jeff Villegas. He's also in my podcast, Selling Local. If you tune in, you can hear him and I discussing sales. It's um, awesome. But, but the, the book is titled The Copier Warrior, A Sales Rebellion. And again, it's, it's the first 30 days. And then we're going to come out with a sequel for 60 and 90. But it's, it's taken us a solid so cool. year. 
to write it where we're at it. And I'll right. tell you right now, though, that if you don't know who David Massover is, you need to check him out. He's a sales trainer, genius. Um, he said something that resonated with me in the final processes or uh, uh, the final stages of finishing up this book. He said, honor the work, Dale. And, and that was one thing that just like it hit me so good because – just like Brandon, just like you in the book you're writing now, that you want to be it to be the best thing that's ever hit stores, you've got to honor it. You've got to put time, energy, blood, sweat, and then you've got to make sure that a professional looks at it outside of you that they oh, can yeah. say they can say, hey, uh, you should put some comments here and restructure the sentence. Right, is the idea because guys like you and guys like me, we know how we perceive it. But we have to be cognizant of the perception of the reader and where they're coming from and their life story, it's going to be different. And because of that, they're going to see and hear things completely opposite of the way you put it, unless you can just preach it. And that very, very, it's hard, it's hard to do because you have to stay super focused, ultra focused. Right. And so that's, that's why right now it's going to, it's taking us a couple more months than, than we expected because we're putting it through that rigorous process of making sure that we honor the work. Yeah, no, that's amazing, man. Yeah, it's it's funny when we had the concept for sales secrets from the top 1%, like I was able to 10x my income and become a multimillionaire in sales because of two things. One, I had all the leads with the the software that we built, Seamless.ai. And then I studied for a decade. I read every single, I bought hundreds of sales books and I studied every single sales expert and wrote down in thousands of Google Docs, Word Docs, notepads, everything that I learned from all these sales experts and authors. It took me a decade to become like the top 1% of the 1%. And I'm like, fuck, why doesn't anyone write a book that just aggregates all this shit? Sure. And let's interview all the top salespeople in the world. I already want to interview them. I want to meet with every sales expert and be like, what, what is your top sales secret? So, um, you know, no, it's, ex it's an exciting experience to go through. Awesome. I'm just, I'm just excited to share your knowledge and expertise from everything that you learned from your father. Again, you know, he sounds like a great man. Thank you so much for sharing that with us to you going door to door, marketing, branding, applying everything that you learned from singing and doing your own band, uh, to now launching the copy of warrior, uh, LinkedIn, local co-host and the sales of rebellion, Really thrilled to have you on the show, Dale Dupree. Everyone follow this guy, connect with this guy. And thank you, audience, for tuning in to Sales Secrets from the Top 1%, where the world's best sales experts share their secrets to sales success. Subscribe at sales secrets, uh, secretsalesbook.com. That's secretsalesbook.com. Pre-order a copy today. Subscribe, follow uh, on LinkedIn. Buy 10 copies, 100 copies for everyone you know. Dale Dupree is in the book. He's going to be in the podcast, the show. And uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more with him, dude, because I'm excited to just for us to talk a lot about sales. We probably have a thousand worse stories we need to share with you. <laughs> uh, no doubt, man. I, I appreciate you, man. Have a great awesome, Sunday. Brandon. Thanks for taking Thanks, your Brandon. time this Sunday. And uh, we'll talk here soon. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Sales Secrets from the Top 1%. We release new episodes every Monday and Thursday, so make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube to never miss an episode.